Hey, what's up? Thank you for joining me in today's live stream. Uh, let me make sure everything runs well on my end. Make sure that you can hear me well and let me know if you encounter any issues. If the volume is low like last time. Uh, I hear myself okay, I think. So let's see here. A bit of a delay, but let me just confirm. There we go. We're good. We're good to go. So let me know who is in the house. And today's going to be a fun one. Uh, we're going to paint the scene. Now let me... Uh, bring over the scene. I want to show you what we're gonna paint today and we'll probably jump straight into it without too much uh, delay. So we have this beautiful cows and pasture scene. Um, it's gonna be really interesting to paint. There are quite a lot of complexities in this one uh, but also uh, a lot of good things uh, that I think will be fun to practice doing. So here it is. Here's our uh, reference photo. I'm gonna bring up the black and white photo as well and I think uh, we can jump straight into analyzing uh, the photo a bit just to figure out what we're gonna focus on because a lot of people have trouble with you know do I paint this detail in? Do I exclude some details? What should I include? How to know what to paint? How to know when and what detail to paint? Now we're actually gonna use both the color and black and white versions it's gonna be fun. Uh, let's see who's in the house and then we will continue. Hey Hank, hope you're doing well. Thank you for being here. Hey Kate, I'll be able to watch for a bit. Can't wait to learn. Awesome, awesome. Yes, and this will be, of course, available for you to watch later on. So let me jump straight into analyzing the photo. Uh, reference photo. Just want to make sure where did I put my phone? Give me just one second. You need to have it. There we go. Sorry for that. <laughs> now we can properly get started because sometimes I use it to see your comments and everything as I'm streaming. Um, so I'm going to open it up uh, on my phone to stream. Um, again, I'm using OBS to stream this. If, you, if you're familiar with streaming, you know. Um, here we go. Here I am. It's a bit hard to see the comments there. So and let me mute myself so we don't hear myself. Uh, let's look at the chat as well. There we go. Okay, now I can see you. Uh, so thank you so much, the uh, Argo Argnano. <laughs> Greetings, everyone uh, from Norway. Cool. Uh, hey KJ. Hey Jill. How are you doing? Hey Claire. Hey Paul. Hey John. Hope everyone's doing well. So for this uh, reference photo, here's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna I'm gonna close the blinds a bit. So because if I'm not mistaken, the US. The daylight saving time changed, so now we're a six hour delay, um, six hours um, time difference. So I'm doing this 3 p.m. my time instead of 4 p.m., which the implication is there's strong direct sunlight here, like like it we used to get in the past. So yeah, as for this photo, I want to I want to focus on the main large shapes. The way I see it, uh, the big shapes. Ruth wants to leave. Let me help her. Good old. <laughs> the, the way uh, to paint this beautifully and again I actually have the reference photos printed out you know what let's switch over to this view and I'm gonna show you I think it will be much much easier so I have a color in black and white so as for the shapes uh, we really want to focus on what's important here the main thing that's important is just the cows and their contrast against the background okay uh, this tree will be a nice kind of supporting focal point and sorry for the crappy print quality I'm running I think one of the ink cartridges just ran out this exactly this with this printing this um, these pictures um, so the backdrop is essentially just a kind of fun thing to uh, make the cows pop and make the grass and everything in the sunlight look good uh, so I'm actually contemplating how much of this cabin I want to show because I may not I don't know if completely remove it but kind of let it be swallowed up into the trees and the details right um, so and, and by the way printing is a great way of properly matching the colors again so I can actually go ahead and do this and actually see the color I'm trying to paint and match uh, and look at every spot here and make sure I get the color right I'm gonna have to squint my eyes for this because it's a little you know the print lines and everything uh, so we got that uh, now let me open up the reference uh, here as well because I have it in the other view, so we're going to use um, cow color, and I'm going to also open up the black and white, and I think we're going to work from uh, the two photos simultaneously. I think that'll be best, actually. So we have all views. 
Uh, and I may also hold this one up close to me. Maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out because I want to just make sure we focus on what matters here. And people always make the mistake of painting each and every leaf, each and every part of the foliage. No one cares about that. People want to see your overall uh, impression. That's much more important, in my opinion, at least. So here we go. We're ready to go now. Let me go over the uh, comments real fast just to see if there's anything interesting. KJ again, Jill, Claire, Paul, John, Norma, how are you doing? Good morning to you too, Ira. Hope you're doing well. Yvonne, watching, I like the subject. Yeah, it's a fun subject and I don't do much of that, so that's fun. Uh, Claire, uh, awesome, yes, yes, the daylight saving time indeed changed. Josephine, how are you doing? Uh, happy Shamrock Day, oh, it's today, funny. Uh, Patricia, good evening, uh, good morning, sorry, everyone. Foggy morning here in New Hampshire Seacoast, oh, that's awesome, sounds beautiful. Seth A, can we paint with you? Definitely, and you can find a reference photo, uh, a link to it will be in the description box. So you can definitely paint with me. Hey, Leron, uh, grasses and trees are my weakness. Great to see this. Yeah, and you're going to really see, Joyce, how we focus on big shapes. That's going to be the main thing here. John, using a printer that's running out of ink, that's one way to get stylized colors. That's for sure. And that actually happened to me before in one of my paintings. Uh, it's called, I think, Colorful Hometown. You see this very well in action, actually. And I just went with the colors I saw and it ended up looking really nice. So first step would be to draw this, right? So we're going to have to sketch something. Uh, and I'm actually going to use this as my reference for sketching. And you can uh, look at what you see on uh, on the screen. So we don't really have an horizon line here. I think this may be some water, actually. Let me open up the reference photo on my computer, too, in big size, uh, so that I can see what we're actually looking at. Yeah, so that's kind of water, valley, whatever it is. doesn't matter. But the horizon, quote unquote, where is it? It's here. It's right here for all intents and purposes. Why? Because the grass is here and it's blocking out the, the, the cabin. So that's a good spot to put it. And when we look at distances, that will be about a quarter, right? On the other end, it's going to be about a third. Notice this is about a third. This is about a quarter. So we can kind of wing it. So if this is the midpoint, that's going to be a quarter. And then if here we're going to mark the third, it's going to be somewhere around here. And it's all approximations. It doesn't have to be fully accurate, but just get a line that connects all of these points and you've got pretty much the grass and everything else. Now, as for the tree, and I love the composition of this photo, it's actually really good. Very often you'll see a tree really kissing the edge of the painting. That's not good. We want to have it inside and, and that following, you know, the rule of thirds, which everyone's familiar with, you divide it to three and three and you usually end up with the focal points being around the meeting point of the third. So that's really nice. It's not a third, it's maybe a quarter, but that works really well. So I like to start from the edge because that guarantees I'll have enough room for the tree, right? If you start from the left side and you place this too much to the right, you run out of space. So I'm actually going to look, look at this. And this is where negative spaces can really help. Look at this area here. Try and draw that. That can help you be accurate. So it goes up like this. Then look at what the tree does. It does this kind of a thing here and goes all the way to the top edge, not the corner, right? You may want to avoid the corner. Somewhere around there, other part of the tree is going to be a fairly straight line and kind of balance out the shape. And already you can tell you're looking at a tree, hopefully, in a really beautiful tree at that. And then the tree casts a shadow, let us not forget. So we have this shadow. Now, we have this grass that kind of goes all the way to the left. Now let's finish the tree here. We're going to have another branch coming up like that. And then this goes here. Then this, imagine that this line just continues, right? Can you see the continuation? That's why I always recommend people study gestures. It will really help you to draw things accurately. Uh, you, can, you can recognize large overarching patterns in the view if you follow the gesture. It can really help. Okay, now before we draw the details of the cows, the way I like to do this is put them in as symbols just to figure out if the composition looks good. So one cow is going to be here and look at what I'm doing. I'm just like, okay, that's going to be a cow. Another cow is going to be here, but I'm going to get it just like you see it a little closer. You see, even a little closer than the reference, perhaps just to break off that composition. Now this cow, ideally I would rotate to face us, but I'm not in the mood to invent things right now. So we're going to keep it as it is. Um, 
and I think the height is okay. I'm just gonna break off that pattern. So instead of them being almost the same height, I'm gonna lower it just a bit, maybe to around here. You wanna make sure again, you avoid the edge, the complete edge. And actually, let me get this one closer. Because look at what happens here. We have too many almost identical distances. Let's break off that pattern. That's the concept of, you know, the higher level composition. So now we have two cows, one separate, it makes for a more interesting thing. Now, the tree has all of this thing that falls down from it. We can kind of mark that in because we're probably going to give it some type of role, but not that important of a role. And as for the cabin, again, this is where I try and be careful with overlaps and tangents, unnecessary tangents. So we need to think about everything and figure out where to place it. In my opinion, the left side is really nice. It's a good point because it kind of intersects with the cow here. So that's nice. And as for the right side, let's please not put it here. Let's go a little bit to the right. Make sure it's in the middle, third maybe part side of the cow. And as for the cabin, look at big shapes, right? What's this distance measure compared to this? Okay, so that you don't don't try and measure this line here and go, okay, this line goes up to here, I feel like. No, no, no. Look at this overall distance and figure out where that is. So that's less than a third. So if that's a third, maybe it's going to be around here. Am I making a, a silly? Yeah, it's more than a third. My bad, my bad. I'm being silly. It's here. And you can always find intersections. So this meets the tree under the split. So this split under the split, it meets it here. Always look for these reference points. It will really help you to get the drawing accurate. Okay, and then we have this diagonal line, so it's gonna go up here, and then we'll find where it meets the top. So it's somewhere around here, and then we have this kind of a thing going, and it connects to our wall, and that is parallel. So we get this kind of a thing, and this is a little too thin, so let me fix that. Something does not work here. So this goes here, and then in, and then here. So we had to move this line a bit more to the right to make more sense, and that actually looks good. And now we need to put in the cow. So this is gonna be the hardest thing to draw. I'm just gonna follow large to small. So we have the head, and then we have the body. And then if you combine what you know about gestures, and if you don't know anything about gestures, you have nothing to combine. So you just work on observation, right? You should be able to make something that makes sense. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect because a lot of it, a lot of the grace here is gonna come from the painting stage. But one thing I want you to pay attention to, at the very least, is look at this area here. The legs, the hind legs start higher up then the front legs, right? I want you to notice these kinds of things at the very least. My drawing is not, it's not accurate at all, but it's good enough to follow. Uh, and we can devote more attention to it as we paint, right? The ears go like that. I think the head is way too big for the body, so I can just make it smaller like this. Then we're gonna put another one here. This one's gonna be a little easier. So we're just gonna get a few lines at different angles and then the head I'm gonna be in the ground, grazing on the grass. And then this goes here, all the way to the back. That's a very cylindrical shape. We always make fun of Ruth that her body is cylindrical. Uh, and then this goes here, leg, leg, another leg. Just try and place the legs kind of in the right spot. It doesn't have to be perfect once again, but that's a cow. The ears are a big characteristic. So at the very least, I'd say pay attention to those. Um, and hey everyone who's joining, <laughs> hey Aaron, hey Richard, hey April, how are you doing? Hey Melodia, oh it's been a while Melodia since I saw you I think. Hey Wolfgang Sol, how are you doing? Hey course I am, hope everyone's doing super well. If you have any questions, again, feel free to drop them at any point, I'll try to address them. So with this cow we actually see a bit more of the face and I usually let light and shadow guide me. In this example, it's not that complex. It's just, you know, a bit of light on top here on the back, on the on the uh, head, on the, you know, so the light and shadow here, you can let it guide you. There's just not a lot to be guided by um, with the cows specifically. The one thing I will say is uh, you want to get the 
shadows that they cast correctly. So if this tree casts a shadow here, these legs should be probably smaller. That's fine. Well, we're going to get it in the painting stage. And then this is going to be a shadow here, a shadow here. And there is another shadow here, if you can see that, but I'm actually going to lower it to make it a little more interesting, I guess. And let's connect it to the bottom like this, just to make something connect the bottom. feels a little empty. Now, grass, grass, grass. Now we can put in some kind of a form for the grass between the cows, just to make sure we get the gist of it. And one thing I wanted to divert your attention to, look at how there's a lot of reflected light or radiant light, whatever you want to call it here, in the black. So this is dark, black, dark, 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 dark. And then it goes lighter around the ground because the light bounces off the ground. That's an effect we want to aspire to achieve. I don't know if we'll be able to, we'll try. Let me show you again, this here, and then it gets a little lighter around the bottom. It's a bit nuanced, it's a bit hard to see. Probably you can see it really well in this colorful reference. Okay, here probably not so much, but there is a bit of a difference there. So we can start painting and this is where I'm contemplating whether I want to go at it one wash to cover everything and then I never <laughs> have a pre-made uh, pre strategy. It will always be a byproduct of many different factors and when I look at this I wonder if I want to work on it again in one go or actually work in stages. Um, and I'm also looking at the colors and I'm trying to figure out, okay, the background is kind of a bluish green, very muted though. And again, muted is a big part of it. It's something I'm going to talk about a lot. If you go just for strongly saturated colors, you're going to create a very amateurish impression. You want to go for something a little more subtle most of the time. This yellow is not such, uh, it's not that saturated of a yellow as you might think. Okay, this yellow uh, orange has a lot of um, mutedness to it. That's a word, right? The brown on the cows, that's not a strong orange. That's actually a brown, okay? So I do wonder how I want to approach this and I think I know. So I think we'll do an initial wash of pretty much just warms where we'll set up the temperature of the warm colors. It's a bit different from what I usually do. So you, you wanna maybe um, be attentive to what I'm going to do. I'm going to try something. I don't do that a lot. We're going to go, not that I do that from time to time, but we'll go over everything with a warm wash that's kind of setting up the temperatures of the warm spectrum. And then we'll probably go over it with the cooler washes as a separate layer on top. Now I'm going to prioritize beauty, simplicity, clarity over details and realism as I often do. Okay. So I'm going to put this here to the side and we'll try and figure it out. I'm not going to leave anything as a paper white highlight except for this right here. That part is really light and feel free, by the way, to save the reference photo and work together with me. That, this leg, that's going to be a white highlight, this face, these legs, but basically that's it. I, it even these highlights on top, on the backs, maybe here, just here, maybe these, but these aren't white. These are actually yellow, okay? So we wanna s set the record straight and go for these correctly. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use an Escoda brush. This is a size 16, if I'm not mistaken, Ultimo Synthetico. It's a pretty thick one, but it does have a nice tip, which is why I love using it. It allows me to do a lot of things with just this one brush and get quite a lot of details in. And lately I've been revisiting it. Um, now, as for my colors, one thing I forgot, I'm going to use my relatively new, and you'll see a review for this paint. I'm going to use my um, raw sienna that I got from Rosa Gallery watercolors. I'm going to review these on Saturday's video. So I'm going to use this for my yellow, raw sienna instead of my usual Indian yellow. And I'm actually going to pour it, do I want to go right, no, I'm going to go, I don't even have an empty well, but I'm going to put it here, it's okay. I'm going to put it above a, a blue, which could be looked at as insanity, but I don't care, <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. So let's move it up here, 
and we'll get started. Um, so with big brushes, you want to make sure you thoroughly uh, wet them, make sure there's enough water and paint. It's very easy to go a little too, uh, too light because you need a lot of water. I'm going to use my... Okay, so the colors I'm going to use are this raw sienna, uh, quinacridone rose, and uh, French ultramarine. This is going to be my mix. This is a mix that creates beautiful muted, um, muted greens and very nice golden kind of fall um, yellows and oranges, which I really, really like. And I can supplement it with a bit of my uh, Indian yellow to get a bit more strength. But I think we're good. I'm not going to do too much of that. And we'll get started top to bottom. So what we have up top is those beautiful leaves and things we're going to paint over in the next wash, right? But notice my temperature is not that saturated yet, okay? Still not that strongly saturated. Now, even for the tree, this highlight on the right, it's not white. And that's something important to pay attention to. Now, as we move down, let me make this a little stronger. And one thing I really like doing is starting to show individual colors here and there. So I'm gonna take a bit of my raw sienna and use it more on its own here in some select spots. And as we get to the cabin, look at what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna paint over it. Because the, the basis for this is going to be, uh, the basis for the blue is going to be a yellow. And that's a really cool little trick. It's going to be really fun. And then we can actually, you know what? I like when there's a bit of blue in the initial wash too. So let's mute this a little bit here. Just using a bit more blue. What this is going to do is gray it, essentially. And that's going to be a nice little effect. Um, I changed my mind. I want this to be a little blue right from the first one. Okay. Now, as we get to um, the cows, we need to start thinking about the highlights, right? Uh, and where it's going to be white and where we're just going to paint over it uh, with our color. So as we reach this point right here, we need to start mixing more yellow from the raw sienna, which is a yellow again. And you could be tempted to put a bit of green in it. I'm not. I'm going to keep this whole thing golden. Beautiful gold. Okay. Maybe a bit more raw sienna here. And I'm going to work carefully. So over the head, we do have a bit of that nice white highlight. The body is going to be yellow though. And look at how much water I have here in my wash that allows me to take my time. Uh, we have a bit of that white highlight here on the back, but then the rest is going to be yellow. And again, using enough water, you can take your time with these washes. Let's close this off like that. Right side is going to be yellow highlight. And the legs here, you see that's where I'm going to introduce a bit of paper white. Like so, but very thin uh, well, shapes rather, negative shapes I'm leaving. And then this leg, that's going to be white. Then we're going to leave a white highlight on that other leg. And we're going to make our way across, okay? Now let me warm things up a little more and I'm going to add just a touch of phthalo blue, actually. Let's add a touch of phthalo blue. Let's see if we can just green this up ever so slightly. I think that's going to be a mistake. I'm going to stick to my raw sienna and we're going to green it up in the next washes. Okay, that's not going to be a good idea actually. And let's continue with the grass here. Work our way around. Look at how much time we have, right? Now this is starting to dry, so you have to pick up the pace, but I'm talking and working uh, quite leisurely. Should probably pick up the pace a little bit. So this goes here. This is complete. This side is complete. This face is going to stay white on the right side, like that. Leg, another leg. All of these legs are going to have a pretty strong highlight on them. This top part of the hind leg, not so much, but the bottom part, yes, and I kind of missed that. That's fine. No worries. Uh, I'm going to go like this. Close this gap off here, probably. And then the face here is going to be white. And I'm going to add a bit more uh, red maybe to this corner with my quinacridone. Uh, hey, Aneta, how are you doing? Annette, sorry, how are you doing? 
Um, this is color, this is not white, and this is not white as well. And then we have a bit of white on the front here. And because I do need to focus on the shape, I don't have much time or attention for wet and wet. Um, but if you can make that time, that'll be even better. But you can't always. And that's gonna be my first wash. Now, let me tilt this and then we can see, okay, how wet it is. The bottom section is still wet, so we can do more with it. The question becomes, do we want to do more with it or are we happy? So I'm gonna close off that corner. That's, that can drive people crazy. Um, and I think we're good. Honestly, I think we'll keep it like that. And that blue is actually going to play a big role here. Because it is going to look really nice. Uh, having something a little different in the temperature. I could honestly go with blue here as well. Uh, but I decided already not to. Now I do want to soften some edges right now. That's a good opportunity. So let me just grab my brush, come back with a bit of water and soften some transitions. That's going to help us later on. Just to have a bit of a more grace and beauty, beautiful shapes. Uh, usually most of these will have at least some smooth transitions in them, right? It's not going to be all hard edges. Uh, and you want to make sure to allow some room for that Here as well. This is, this doesn't exist. So let's blend it right in. Um, and you know what you could do, something fun, is bring out a bit of the highlight onto the top like this. Make it look a little maybe glowy. Though that, that's gonna happen later on once we start adding some more uh, of the background. So let's let this dry. Actually, I have some natural sunlight so I can set this aside for a few seconds. Let's use our natural sunlight here just for fun. And let's see if I can get the painting to stand in the natural sunlight. Well, it kind of refuses to do that. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. Or not. Okay, or not. Let's put it on the modem and hope I don't restart it accidentally. Maybe that'll work. Yeah, no, it doesn't want to work with me. Okay, so no net. Oh, I can put it in the window. So you can't see it, but it's going to lead to a bit of a more interesting and um, flatter result. It's Usually I find that it's better to just flatten the paint. Now I can show you as we um, as we let it dry, and then we'll, we're going to look at some of your messages in the chat, um, that the, the focus for the next step, and that's when we create the painting. The next step is when we're actually going to create it. That's going to be adding the shadows, right? So adding this background and the cabin and the shadows on the cows and I think something fun we can do is actually start with the cows though I don't usually do that uh, or maybe even with the grass first because what I want to do is get to a point where we start with the cows before the backdrop because that will allow us to see what we have to skip it will allow us to better understand the scene right now the, call, the cows may be of similar value to the background probably not a little lighter so it's good we can work on them first that will be our next step and I'm gonna let the value guide me while using the very basic colors we've been using so far. Again, the colors, I don't care about that almost at all. By the way, this background is really similar to my new uh, turquoise color that you will see on Saturday again. That's quite close, actually. But in any case, let me see uh, what you're saying uh, in the comments. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to ask. This was an intensive wash for some reason. And by the way, you could go wet and wet, pre-wet everything. You'll have less control in the placement, but it could still work. Everyone says, good morning. <laughs> hey, Laura, how are you doing? Good morning. Hey, Monica. Uh, hey, Nicole. Hey, Yoshi. Um, SG, good morning, Liron from Alberta, Canada. First live I've attended ever. That's cool. I have many pics in my Nikon of cows, horses, and pastures, but haven't had the courage to pay them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, enjoy the videos. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, just go for it. This is such a fun subject, honestly. Just give it a try. Um, and, and if you uh, have, have questions or you want some feedback, email me and I sometimes, uh, when I get the time, I do try and give some feedback. I uh, would be curious to see because I love these kinds of scenes. I will say also focus on strong contrast. If you have scenes that have strong, clear shapes and contrast like here, that's ideal. Uh, Manetch, how are you doing? Good evening from the Philippines. It's been a while, I think, since I saw you too here, right? Uh, and hey, Annette again. Hey, Phyllis. 
Uh, good morning, just started with watercolor and did my first painting. Dude, this is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, I've been doing it for a while now and, and I still find myself in, in intense washes that are like, oh, what am I going to do now and what's next? And yeah, definitely. Uh, such a very good art brother. Thank you so much. Hey, Joyce, do you soften edges with wet brush or slightly dry brush? Well, with slightly wet brush, with a damp brush. It, it's not really the kind of brush you'd... It's not the same wetness as if you'd pre-wet the paper. So when you, I want to pre-wet, I soak the brush in water. It's like, it's, I'm going to show you. I, I, I've actually done it just a second, but you can see here again. I dip the brush in the water, but look at what I'm doing next. That's the real important part. The dipping is just dipping. I'm doing this kind of a thing just to get rid of some of the water. And then I can better control it here. So right now this is really wet. But if I just do this, that's good. That's usually good for softening an edge this small, right? If it's a bigger shape and I have more room for it to move, I'll I'll probably come back with a very, you know, see, this is very wet, right? I could do this and use it to extend the wash, right? But if I don't now, that's how damp I need it to be, just after a few touches on the paper towel or whatever. So it's damp. The only way to really understand it is to experiment with it until you get the right... Uh, ratio because it's really about ratios you know it's very hard to measure these kinds of things and, and you have to really experiment until you are comfortable enough with it right uh, Josephine why didn't the blue run into the sky that's what would happen to me um, so there isn't really sky here do you refer to this cabin in the background kind of like this um, the reason it didn't is because things were starting to go from wet to damp if you go too soon it will move all over the place I used a similar level of wetness and as what's on paper so there was movement but not a ton of movement and the the background or the area around it started um to go damp instead of wet now one more thing and i can show you this real quick because this is something a lot of people ask about they're very worried about the paint moving into one another right if you're not using too thin paint with too much water you can actually get quite a lot of individual differences. Let me show you. If you put this paint here, and then you're going to come back and put some, let's say, phthalo blue right next to it. See, they will move in together, but not that much. They still maintain some of a separate edge. Same thing if you were to, were to work with yellow is going to happen, right? So here's my yellow. It's not going to move completely together as long as you have equal um equal val equal uh, ratios of water to paint okay they're going to maintain their independence in a way now if you're going to go like this you're helping it essentially move into the shape right so if it's very wet and you're holding it at an angle you'll get more movement but you can just hold it like this you can change the angle you can hold it the other way around to balance it out this is going to dry pretty much individually practice this practice pr placing and i show one of my, I think, best videos ever that is very simple and straightforward is called How to Handle Paint on the Palette. And I show there, or was it How to Mix? I don't remember. There's a video I did. It's in one in my playlist, the beginner, uh, watercolor beginner um, techniques, uh, where you put not that wet of paint right next to one another. And I show you what happens when you put, let's say, this paint that is quite thick next to a T kind of a thing, right? And then you see how they move in together, whereas I could do the other way around. I could use a very uh, wet red and put a thick blue next to that, right? And you'll get a bit of a different movement. See how the wet tends to move into the slightly, um, slightly thicker? And if I hold it at an angle, you notice how it starts to move down into it, right? That's the kind of thing you want to learn intuitively. You have to do this enough. Now, I don't know exactly the, the, your case and why that happened to you, the fact that they moved together. Um, but feel free to send me an email, show me the specific example, and maybe I can give you a better comment. Some of it will be dependent on the paper, if the paper is really bad, or, you know, it could be many things, honestly. Uh, so I'd have to see it. But as a general rule, it should work okay, like I just showed you. Um, but yeah. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Daiji, I'm half an hour late, but I'm here. Yeah, we didn't do too much. Uh, NM Ranch Hand, is there no bleaching effect of the sunlight while the paint is wet? Um, no. Bleaching, you mean it makes the color just completely fade? Not really. Uh, it's just going to dry it faster. 
Uh, hey Marjorie, happy you, you were able to make it. Uh, Karen Penner, good morning from British Columbia, Canada. Thank you for being here. Javi Java, thank you for being here. Nancy G, thank you for being here. Salute from France. Sorry, I can't read uh, uh, Russian or I'm, hopefully that's Russian, but I can't read it. Uh, I wish I could. I mean, it looks not that complex. I just recently learned what an R and L look like, but I, don't, I never remember. The Arognono, I love your process to run. It has been so useful and fun to learn from your videos. Thank you so much. And so many people here. Uh, if you can take a moment, like the video, like Tom says, thank you so much. 50% viewer to like ratio. That's all wrong. If you can take a moment, leave a like. That will be greatly appreciated. Uh, Olivier Belnard, hey all, Haley Ron, always a pleasure to see and hear you, <laughs> hear you. Uh, like your first watch, thank you. Joyce, thanks, Iran. That's really helpful. Happy to hear. Hey, Liz. Hello from Switzerland. Thanks, Iran. Have been trying to do a cow painting for a while now, and this is really helping. Oh, cool, super cool. So we got the timing right. Now let me get the painting. It's gonna be probably fully dry because it's sunlight. It dries paintings much, much faster, which is great fun. So yeah. So here we go. This is what we got. Uh, and again, the approach as for the next step. This is where a lot of people uh, have different ways they recommend continuing. Some prefer to put in the background because it makes everything pop. I'm going to be different this time and I'm going to start with the cows and the grass. Okay. Now for the grass, I want to bring it from this muted color into a bit of a more green, yellowy green. So let's see if we can mix something like that. I'm essentially mixing my May green here, right here on the palette, you can see it. And uh, my uh, raw sienna. And I'll try and see if I can create something that's a little green. Now, don't be mistaken. The reason why the grass um, glows is not because of the color, it's because of the value as soon as you put the dark background. With that, I do want to give it a bit more of a green glow, at least to some extent. I really like the way it looks. So I'm just basically covering it up with a bit of green and you can treat this as kind of an in-between wash. In fact, I see a bit of green on the tree, so I'm just gonna put it here and there and we'll see how it's gonna translate um, to later washes, but I'm just gonna put it where I see it, honestly, uh, like this. You can be quite free here because we're gonna cover a lot of these with darker paint. So don't worry too much. And we'll, we're just going to continue with this. And one thing that can help is go like that so that the paint moves down. Let me see that you can see this. Yeah, good. We're good. Uh, so that the paint moves down with gravity. That's something that can be very helpful sometimes. Um, let's see here. This is where my normal yellow might have been a better choice, though. I'm not sure. But in any case, we'll continue this. The only disadvantage of holding it up to the side like that is it may disorient you. So just make sure you know where you are and what you're painting. I uh, you can rotate it occasionally to make sure you're uh, in the right spot. Got that grass here as well, you see behind. This is not, again, this is just to give it a bit of greenness. It's not gonna do anything. In terms of value, it's only getting us farther from the impression because we're essentially darkening something that should be very light. But we're going so pale here just to push it in the direction of green that we should be okay. Got it? Hope that makes sense. It's just a mid wash to show you. You can do a glaze that's very thin and adjust some of the temperature uh, in color with it. And that can work really well. See, I don't, I don't follow a very detailed plan for this stage. It's just to set the tone, so to speak. Now, the reason I do this before the cows it's very simple and if you've been watching my processes for a while you could probably guess what I want to be able to do is have the cows mix with their cast shadows and in order to do that it's better if I first do this wash so that I don't wash away the cast shadows okay now as for the shadows we're we'll, we're gonna talk about that let's talk strategy for the next stage it's gonna be start with the top of the cows and maybe I'll move it to the sunlight again so that it dries faster just as we speak Sorry for bumping the camera. Let's see here. I'm just trying to find a place for it to stand properly because I don't usually use the sunlight because it hasn't been really sunny in a while. But so we're gonna do cow top to bottom. 
for these areas of the head, we have to match the color. We have to see what it is, right? So what I see here is a bit of a bright muted red pink. And then as for the body, that's a brown, okay? So you'll do this kind of a white muted, sorry, mix and then into the body and it's all gonna be done in one wash and onto the legs and onto a cast shadow. We're gonna do this smooth process in one go and by going first after the cows instead of the background, we're devoting the most energy we have at the relatively early stages of the painting for the focal point. And that's sometimes very smart. You start with the focal point and then you move to the surrounding. It just gets better results very often, for me at least. So let's see what else you're saying. Um, I think that's pretty much it. We've caught up. Uh, Olivier, thank you so much. Uh, John, leaving a like while I'm letting my first layer dry. Cool. Awesome. Send me the result afterwards. I'm curious to see. So I think I'm going to give this a bit of a hair dryer session just to speed things up. So let me mute you for just one second. We'll be back in a moment. Good. Now, it all comes down to, can we get the next washes to be done in one go? I'm gonna try. At the very least, I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna start mixing a muted kind of gray. And what's beautiful about these colors is that you can use pretty much your leftovers to get a gray and then push it in the direction you want. So you start with this gray and then you add a bit more blue to get it blue, a bit more red to get it kind of pink, whatever. And we'll get started. Now the one downside of not working on the background first is that it's a bit hard to tell the value and you don't know exactly uh, what to compare it to because you don't have the darkest darks. But we're, we'll deal with it, we'll just be careful. Um, and if we get it wrong, we learn, right? So this is a pretty well lit area. I'm actually gonna put in pink. Feels like it should have been pink. And then the ears and the advantage of working this way, start small with a small shape, is that you have reaction time, right? Look at how I can take my time and kind of make sure things look good. And maybe even let's add a bit of neutral. And this could be considered as overworking, but I'm actually fine with that. And then let's add a bit of brown. As we mentioned, we're gonna need brown for the body. A little bit more of the yellow, a bit more of the red, and then we can use our test paper to see what we got and is it even close to the color of the cow, which I'm kind of sampling here. That's actually pretty close, so I'm just gonna go with that. The only thing is it needs to probably be a little darker. So there we go. Connect that directly to the face, which now obviously needs to be lighter. So let's fix that. Just go back with some water. And then we can continue our wash. I wanna show you how, again, you can get things wrong the first time and then you have an opportunity to fix them, right? It's not, it's not doomed. It do quite a bit to fix your mistakes, actually. And this is gonna go all the way here. And as we move down, I'm going to add a bit more yellow and lighten things up ever so slightly because the legs are a little lighter here from what I can see. Even the belly lower sections are a little lighter. And what, what you want to ask yourself is, does this read like a cow? And again, it's going to improve once we get to uh, put the background on and add a few more details. But does it look like a cow? Does it read well from afar? The answer is yes, then you did a good job, I think. Um, but yeah, I don't know why I'm feeling a little rusty in the last couple of days, honestly. With painting, that happens to me too. Uh, sometimes you just feel rusty. And here, let's do a bit of wet and wet just to darken some spots on the cow that look a little dark, see like that. And then, don't forget, we have this edge here up top that I would like to maybe blend a bit. Once again, this shouldn't be as harsh of an edge. 
I'm just gonna loosen it up with my damp brush go like this and we can continue this to the shadow now the shadow is gonna be more blue still neutral but more blue and it is gonna be a little lighter so let's see if we have somewhat of the right idea and we'll probably connect it to the shadow on the tree here so we'll go like this now one thing to pay attention to is because this shadow is on grass it's gonna have this kind of a shape to it right it's not gonna be just a flat completely flat line but it's actually gonna have a bit of a pattern to it indicating the surface on which it rests which is uh, the more important thing as we've seen recently in another video so now this starts to read as a cow hopefully again not perfect yet uh, but it's gonna be much much better once we add some of the background now let's move on to the next cow it's definitely a challenge to match these colors but I'm gonna do my best um, so for this one we're gonna keep to this light muted color and I'm just gonna put something and we'll see we'll see how that feels so there's this stain here and always think about things in terms of shape if you can it's shapes it's not uh, a detail it's not a neck or a, you know whatever it's all shapes that you're painting now let's go a little darker and if you just if you have trouble reading what's in the reference photo you can always just break away from it and try and invent your own kind of details that's something i'll often do in bigger scenes here i'm kind of am trying to draw things uh, paint things rather as i see them but feel free to break away from that uh, if you're having a hard time really recognizing what you're looking at that can often be the case it's not easy painting is can be really challenging sometimes so that goes here and i think that front area with the neck should be darker so i'm gonna mix something a little darker here i'm still learning this raw sienna and how to handle it so that's probably responsible to some of the trouble I may experience here and there. Let's go darker on this shape here, see? Wet and wet, let the paint kind of do its thing. This is wet enough still to do these kinds of things, right? And then onto the face. And that's actually gonna be our biggest temperature play here. So I'm gonna go quite blue. And let's see if that makes sense. It's gonna be one of our biggest temperature plays here so yeah that that could work I think this should connect here maybe yeah that's gonna be good and don't forget to smoothen some of that edge and even here you want to loosen it up a bit and this is small right these are small shapes we're talking about it's a small painting so we have to be a little careful. And how fast before it dries, I almost forgot we need to connect it to our cast shadows. And go dark, but a little bluer, I think. You don't have to put these in, like I showed you with the jig, zigzaggy kind of grass patterns. You can just put it in confidently however you want. Um, but I do want some of that pattern to show and these are long stretching shadows because uh, we're looking at this again a bit of a later time of day perhaps um, so another thing to take into consideration right the time of day a bit darker on some of the shadows and we are good to go let's move on to the last one I hope that makes sense that looks kind of I'm not sure what it will end up looking like, but hopefully it will end up looking good. Uh, now for this, let's... So I'm wondering, I should have pushed the red a little more here, even though I closely matched the colors. So this one, I'm, I'm, on the one hand, I, it's really orange and it's a bright, beautiful orange. On the other end, I don't want to push the temperature here too much. So let's start with an orange. Let's start being a little courageous and then we can always dumb it down with some blue. So there's this going across the back. And then there's this little bump up there, goes a little higher and this connects here. And let's add a bit of blue to that and a bit more. Actually, let's add a bit of my normal um, 
yellow, my uh, Indian yellow here. And as we get to the bottom, let's take just a second to work on that edge. I'm actually going to use my blending brush because I don't want to get rid of the paint here. Uh, let's see if we can successfully do this. Make it feel a little rounder, right? Because we, as we loosen up the edge, and maybe go a little cooler around the bottom. And again, a lot of it is just you look at the thing and you do your best to recreate it. Sometimes it's very hard. Don't be too hard on yourself. You see me here almost every Thursday struggling with something different. Uh, that's just a part of it. Um, so this leg's going to go to the back here, I think. And then for the face, we're going to use again a bit of a more neutral mix. I'm going to need a bit of yellow here. And just get this very light shadowy part, like so. Like that. The shape of the shadows is not perfect, but I think it works well. A little less blue. Now, this is a nice little variety, right? Uh, you get a bit of a bluer here, but then you get a bit more of a red there. So that makes sense, I think. Now, let's neutralize a bit. Working as fast as I should, but also as slow as I can to actually get the details in and render things properly. There are some long stretching shadows here coming from the left that I kind of neglected. So let's put those in. These help bring out the highlights on the legs. But I don't want to overwork them, so we're going to probably do this. I think that should work well. Now again, if this looks bizarre, once we add a background, it's going to make a whole lot more sense. You'll see. Um, the, the only thing is we need to make sure we get the background right. We don't exaggerate too much either way when it comes to temperature, value, and all those good stuff. Um, the tree also could be painted. So actually, let's get that now. Uh, and the, the, I'm going to try and build it up kind of wet and wet. Or maybe we're going to start. I'm going to show you. Uh, we're going to start and just put a bit of a layer of red here from the middle out. Because I see a bit of red underneath that I want to capture. Okay, and you're gonna see how this slowly builds up. And then we're gonna start feeding it some darker blue. And near the edges, it does look a lot darker. So I can start kind of mixing a darker neutral mix. This is a little stronger. Stronger here. This entire thing should be stronger. And that's another kind of fun way of building things up a little bit, you know, step by step. Um, there's a bit of a texture here on the part that's exposed to the sun. And then as we reach the final stages, I'm going to push the real dark areas you see here. And I like to do it this way, like really not be afraid to show individual paints. So you see a lot of the... Um, a lot of the blue, you see a lot of the red, and no one cares, it looks really good, I think. Um, and then a few of the darker spots here. And as we move down, right near the base, I'm going to add just a bit of yellow to neutralize a bit. Kind of contrast it a little bit with the ground and connect it directly to the shadow we put earlier. Actually, let's add a bit of neutral tint here to neutralize this and connect directly to the shadow from earlier. I just want to make sure that I get the shape kind of to make sense. We do have this area here that's in the shadow. Let me mix a bit of the green here and see what we get. So a bit of that kind of a thing here, very, very loose and still quite light. And I think this tree trunk could be left uh, this light, honestly. Once we put in the background, I think this will make sense, you know? I think it should be as light. Now, let me blend some of these areas like that. So, I think that looks really good. 
and this lit part will contrast beautifully with the background. We will we'll only know once we put a background. That's the, the part where we have to be brave and it's coming up right now uh, in just one second. Um, do I want to r make it a little more red in some spots? You know, I see a bit of, and you can do this just to give yourself a few more seconds to work on it. But I'm a big fan of getting things r the right timing and if the right timing is passed, I don't I would not want to get awkward cauliflowers, right? Unless I'm very deliberate and I, I'm placing them where I want them to be, I'm not going to take the risk, usually. Um, so yeah, now we're going to let this dry for a few more seconds, see where we end up. There's actually a few more shadows in here that I forgot. Coming from this side. Let's try and neutralize this a little more. This combination of three colors doesn't neutralize as well. So that's something I'll have to learn to work around. But we do have this shadow coming from the right that I do want to include because I like the way it makes the tree trunk look. So I'm going to keep that, even though it's really at the edge. And we'll continue to remember I made up this kind of a shadow here. Let's do it like that. I don't want to exaggerate it. Something like that I think will work. Okay, I think. Let me let me look at it for a second. Yeah, that's. I don't think that's too distracting. Now let's try something fun here. I'm gonna create a trail that's a little bluer, like that. I think that should work. We'll let this dry for a few more seconds. I really like the tree. The bottom part here really connects well. I think the cows look good, then it's all about that background and how successfully can we paint around these things that I don't even know if I want to even try, you know? Are they that important in the grand scheme of things? Do we want to leave them? I'm not using masking tape usually. Um, we'll have to think about it. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> let's hear your thoughts and uh, let's hear your thoughts and see. Um. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, where were we? Yeah, Ru says it's night in Asia. Hope I can watch till the end. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's not going to be that long of a process. There are no, no, says I need a hairdryer for my painting. For my hair, not so much. Yeah, it's really useful. It's such a useful tool. I uh, can't believe I painted for so long without one. Really. Um, Kelvin says, hi, everyone. Hey, Kelvin, how are you doing? Uh, Joy says, when you darken the color uh, in wet and wet, are you using thicker paint? Yes. Uh, when I worked this area, I gradually did more and more um, uh, uh, thicker and thicker paint, less water. But you'll see the last couple of, of red marks I put, these were a little wetter. It, it wasn't fully on purpose, but it just felt right to put them in. Why? Because when something dries enough, even if you put something above it, the worst thing you'll get is kind of an interesting pattern. Uh, so I was okay with that. I was okay with that. The one thing I hope I didn't go too dark with the tree. That's one thing that kind of bugs me, but we'll see about that. I think it's okay. I think it should be good. Um, we're using darker color, but same thickness. Um, no, it's 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 using thicker paint. Definitely thicker paint, not darker color necessarily. It's kind of the same thing because you get a darker color, but it's the same pigments. So yeah, same color. Ellen, hi all a bit late, but made it. No need to apologize. <laughs> uh, let's see here. John, I'm using burnt orange instead of raw sienna, and I was a bit skeptical about dropping in some lime yellow, but it has a nice glow. Yeah, and it's kind of similar with what I did with the grass. It's going to work. And I think this has a really nice soft feel to it. I think it's going to be a nice painting if we get the next steps right. Uh, April. That left cow is my favorite. I love that she looks like she has she's moving forward. Oh yeah, that, yeah. There is a bit of a nice movement there. I actually like this one best, but there is a nice movement here too. And you see the warm up process right here. I wasn't really confident, and this was a little better than this one's a little more. That's how it is. That's just how it goes. Um. So yeah, Elsa, please apologize. Uh, great job, Liron. The cows look a bit uh, conscious about being painted. The other like, what's he doing? <laughs> um. Yeah, Art Flow by Mo. Hello, first time here. Welcome aboard. Well, so happy to have you here. First time, that's amazing. 107 viewers too. That's that's my honor and I want to thank each and every one of you who is here. I really, really appreciate that. 
Uh, I know a lot of you checked out my courses, but if you still haven't, and some people it's the first time here, uh, I do have a couple of courses on watercolor painting. My favorite one is Frustration Free Watercolor, uh, but the new watercolor realism one is quite good too. Uh, but what I like about the Frustration Free Watercolor is that um, it really solves that problem that a lot of people have of uh, just not being able to paint loosely and enjoy the process. And if you're not enjoying the process, what are you doing? You know? Um, so let's see here. I want to play around with the focus just for a second. I feel like it could be a little more focused. But maybe I'm imagining things. I don't know. Let's cancel. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. <laughs> do not do that. Just one second. Let me fix that. Why would hitting cancel go back to something else? Let's do this. Yeah, okay, I think we're good. Good enough. Uh, so now we need to start thinking about the background seriously. Now I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna take an interesting approach on the background. I'm looking at the paintings real small on my screen right now because I'm looking at the stream itself. I'm gonna use that as my view. Um, because I want to make sure I don't go too much obsessed with the details. So here's what we're going to do. It's going to be a weird, awkward wash, I can tell you already. I'm going to do my best. I cannot promise it's going to end well, but I'm going to do my best. Okay. So I'm going to mix here a bit of Pyrrhal Scarlet and a bit of Peril in Red and a bit of uh, Indian Yellow. And we're going to paint the entire background in one go and hope that it works. So let's give it a try. Before I do that, actually, let me mix that dark blue. Um, let me see. I think I'll have to use some phthalo. It's best if I mix that in advance, too. So that's going to be a very dark phthalo with my quinacridone and a bit of my yellow that's a little opaque right the raw uh, raw sienna and i think we're good i think we nailed it good so we're good on that front now let me start with the reds i know it's crazy but we're gonna start with the reds here so i'm basically gonna paint the entire thing in one go again i'm stalling because i'm scared of this wash but we'll see so let's do this here I'm going to put in some very strong reds. And we'll let fate and destiny decide how this wash is going to look. So here we go. I'm going to switch over to this bigger brush. I'm going to pick up this dark paint. Darken it some more. Big brushes kind of require you to go a couple of times. And look at what I'm going to do here. I'm going to paint kind of around these shapes I put earlier and into. So we'll get this kind of a flow of hinted foliage. Okay. No idea if it's going to work, but I have a feeling that would be our best bet of doing this without going into paralysis by analysis and all of that. Because we've already been quite analytical with this scene. I'm going to spray some water. I have to, otherwise I'm going to lose my flow here. Because it's a very scary wash. And scary washes uh, are not to be uh, ran away from, but are rather there to be tackled. So let's see if we can tackle this successfully. I'm just painting, kind of like you would maybe with oil, where I see some of the reds. And then I'm coming back literally painting between them with the blue. It's a risky technique that's gonna work for us, I think, okay? Don't leave too many gaps. Now, of course, I know this red should be lighter than um, what I'm actually painting blue. Should be a highlight, probably almost like the paper is right now, but I'm okay with that. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna crank up the ultramarine and then use a bit of neutral tint to neutralize it. And that's gonna be our cabin. So it's a bit of a different color, but not that different. And we're continuing. We are continuing. We don't have time to waste at all on this wash. Go fast, 
to get it to be as even as we can. Now I know it looks incredibly dark, but I have a feeling it's going to be the right, uh, the right value. I have a feeling. Could be wrong. I don't promise that I'm right, but I have a feeling it's going to be accurate. Let's finish off this right section actually. It's a little easier. I like how the sunlight from the window got dark too. So, uh, and then let's add a bit of my uh, new color here, this new um, turquoise, because I think it's going to be perfect for the occasion. To be honest with you, just to get this to be a little greener, because this is has a lot of green in it. Let's see. And now we're gonna have to make sure that the top is dark enough. I know it looks super, super dark, but look at how wet it is, okay? And if I got it wrong, so be it. Now I'm gonna start adding some water and lightening things up. Why? Because remember, as it moves down, we saw that things get a little hazier and lighter. So let's try and go for that effect here. But we have to start being careful about our uh, shapes. One thing I do have to continue is the cabin itself. So we'll do this and again as we move down we're gonna start lightening things up and this just turns into an abstract shape in the background, right? I don't want it to be too pronounced. I definitely don't want it to feel like a separate cabin. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned that but felt like it had to be simplified in some way. And this goes here. And this is where the grass is already. Not, not much to say. I'm just trying to paint very uh, carefully around the shapes. Now again, if I were more talented or skilled or experienced, I could try and connect the, this background onto the cows already, but this is honestly a very hard thing to do, so I didn't even try doing it this time. Maybe if it was half the size, a little smaller, I would have considered doing that more seriously. But there we go. Yeah, that's good. Well, let's Let's do something interesting. You know what? I'm going to do something fun. Let's just wrap up this shape. So one of the things that I see Joseph Bukovic does a lot is just charging back with water, kind of having fun. So we can try and do that. I don't know why it got so dark. The entire, uh, the entire frame. That's not a painting. <laughs> everything just got dark. Uh, so let me try and fix that before everything dries on me. I'll open the blinds a little more. Yeah, that's better. And I'm going to straighten that, that line here, should be, I think, a little like that. There we go. This. And don't worry, I'll take a picture later so, we, so that you can see the colors more accurately because they're really, really nice. And here's where we're going to take some risks. I'm going to soften that edge. That's not a risk. That's just me softening an edge. Um, I'm going to soften this edge. I'm just softening for the sake of the overall composition so that it feels flowy. There is no, I don't see any parts of these that are actually softer, but some softer transitions, you see how they make it look really interesting. Now, here's where we're going to take a risk. I'm going to do the Zbukovich move where I'm actually just going to put paint in. Uh, water, sorry, not paint. And try and see if I can get some kind of a, an interesting foliage pattern in the background. I have seen him do this a couple of times. I don't do that much. Um, but I think it could be an interesting little effect to try and get there in the background. And of course, he does it in a more deliberate way and probably a better timing, but... I'm curious to see what it will do. But this area especially is really good looking. I think it looks fantastic. And you have no idea, the color looks so much better. Let me see if in the front camera you'll see it. But I'll show it to you later. Taking a picture. Yeah, it's really hard to see, I know. 
really really hard to see but it's much more green than that it appears on video but if you see the, val the values are quite accurate I think now if you really want to well, it's too late for that actually I can spray some water let's try something here because the background is just one shape let's be a little ruthless here and just go crazy with it what I wanted to do is grab some very thick paint could be just neutral tint directly and look at what I'm gonna try and do here I'm gonna try and give some structure to this cabin by using very thick paint to do this kind of a thing right to put that line see and then you can do the same and look at how wet that is we can still work on it and probably we can give it a few more seconds but let's let's try it out and do this kind of a thing you can even do this kind of a separation here or go darker on that lower section if you really want to right you can kind of create its structure don't overdo it but you can create its structure in this kind of a way and then if we just get this small tiny detail here like this right uh, we can straighten that line but uh, you know what we can do it let's do it just dark dark paint let's try and straighten that shape up this is good enough I think maybe that gives a better hint at what the shape is of that behind but you see how it kind of just blends into the background that's much better I think than to show it you know very pronounced now let me try doing something <laughs> beachy up you're gonna spam the chat because I'll have to shut you up so I don't even know what that means but if you can stop it that'll be great if not I'll just shut you down for a moment or two um, so let me take a picture and show you what this looks like on my end give me a second here I want uh, to show you the colors a little more accurately because they look really really darn good so let's see here you have no idea how different it is it's crazy um, this color just doesn't film well. You'll see it in the uh, review I'm going to show you on Saturday too. This um, turquoise just does not show well on camera. I don't know why. Let's see here. So I sent it over. Definitely looks different from the photo in many ways, but uh, it looks so much better. So let me grab the pick, and in just one second, I'm going to see uh, what else you're saying in the chat. Yeah, okay, bye. Uh, Put user in timeout. So I put you in timeout. <laughs> Beach, I put you in timeout. I don't have to do that a lot, but uh, I had to this time. So sorry. Um, okay, yeah, that's good. Tools adjust size. I just don't want this picture to be huge. <laughs> um, let's do this. There we go. And I'm going to upload the pic. Just doesn't show it that well for some reason. Um, downloads. Is it this one? Yeah. Okay. So you'll see. There is a bit of a glare. But you can see the color is much better. Especially. Oops. Didn't plan to do that. Uh, especially in the area of this sheep the rightmost sheep and the tree i love that section so much looks really good now as soon as the glare goes and and definitely after i scan this um it will show much better uh, but but the colors are really neat i'm looking at them now without the glare it's really cool and i'm actually wondering if i want to add something else i think it looks really good um, especially when you look at and again let me get rid of this this area right here this red and the sheep it works so well um, let me see if I can fix that and then we'll look at the comments. Sorry, I know I said for a long time and then I'm gonna look at the comments and then uh, So the white balance Oh, sorry, not the white balance the exposure yeah, Okay It's not gonna be perfect, but that's good enough. So let's see what you're saying in the chat except for Beachy's spam <laughs> Sorry about that You can never control what's going on live. That's the thing um, so I'm gonna read from here from my phone directly 
<laughs> That's funny. Uh, where did we uh, leave off? Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yvonne says, if we want more definition of leaves, would using masking fluid with sponge work? Yeah, just masking fluid. I just don't use it much, but yeah, you could definitely do that. Um, one thing that I didn't do and I thought of doing initially is just to spray a bit of like uh, blue paint onto it a bit more to make it look a bit more like leaves. But honestly, what you can do is kind of mask and then use the exact same technique I did so that you'll get not only these beautiful soft um, red transitions from red to blue, but then also highlight the leaves on top of them. That's definitely something you could do. I can just go back with opaque paint. I'll show you how I do that in just a second. We can do that. It's going to be fun. Um, uh, but yeah. Uh, Marjorie Beef Cows. Love the misty background. <laughs> Looks like early morning. Yeah. Uh, Dwayne uh, says greetings from Jamaica. Thank you for being here, Dwayne. Marjorie, hope I like it as well when you do the background. Yeah, I, ho I hope so too. I hope that I still hope that I like it as well. Uh, greetings from Argentina. Thank you so much. Jack Jack. <laughs> um, John says, hi, Liron. Hope you are well. Uh, my friend, sorry I'm late to the live stream. Yeah, no worries. Welcome. Uh, hey, Kelly. Thank you so much for the very interesting. Monica, you're scaring me, but I trust your instinct. Yeah. Uh, Marjorie, before you went back working on the background, it looked like the farm fields in the valley. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's a completely different scene. That could be a nice one, too, I think. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, can see how this mess will turn into something. Thank you, White Reza. Yeah. And you know what's so funny? When people see the end result, they don't really care about any mess. They, they just see the end result. So what's funny is people who haven't seen the process and are going to see this painting maybe on Instagram or the gallery, it's just going to look like a nice painting that has some nice blues and reds in it and greens. That's what it's going to be. They're, they're not going to think about the process too much, you know? Um, so yeah, don't overthink it. Um... Olivier is uh, scared too, but trusting you. Thank you for the trust. I hope I deserve that trust. I still am not sure. G10, please give some tips for watercolor freelancing. Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Let me make myself bigger. Why am I so small in the corner, like I'm in punishment? Let's see here. That's me. And those are the paintings, <laughs> the reference, sorry. Um, so I would say this, for any kind of freelancing or business, but freelancing definitely, you need to connect your product with the customer. So you need to understand who will get value from your paintings, right? And that's not an easy thing to do. It's something that I still sometimes don't know, right? You have to test it out and play around with it. I definitely know that if I teach, my customer is going to be people who want to learn painting. But if you just intend to paint, you have to figure out who's the customer for your paintings. Is it can be like uh, interior designers that you can provide a lot of paintings for a good price and they can furnish their, their uh, houses and assets. Uh, uh, that's that's going to be more maybe real estate agents or whatever companies. But maybe it's interior designers that they can use your uh, paintings to to design different places for people. Right. Maybe the customer is a gallery where you put your paintings and sell, but you have to figure that out. If you don't figure that out, you won't you won't do a good job at selling. Now that's just it, and it's not easy. I also struggle with it um, because art is something beyond. It's not it's not just a service, you know. And a service can have a very clear cut audience, whereas art can be good for many things. Now, so you have to figure that out. You have to find what you enjoy painting, what you're good at painting, and then who is the audience for that. My experience, it takes a long time to just make a living from selling the paintings, unless you have good connections with galleries. Um, if that's not the case, it can be really hard and daunting. So you have to um, uh, account for that, right? And, and make your money in whichever way you can until that's enough. That's enough of an income just from selling the paintings, which is not easy. Um, save the cows. Uh, Rue says, looks like night in the sky, but morning in the ground. Yeah, I guess. It's just because there's tons of trees behind it. So it's kind of a, a wall of trees. Um, Yvonne Ulmer, what turquoise are you using? So I'm going to show you these fully, but it's the Rose Gallery turquoise. Let me see if I can grab it for you. I think it is this one. 
So it looks like this, and I'm gonna put the links and everything in Saturday's video, but it, it's called Rosa, and the line gallery is their artist grade. So there, is an, there are other lines, go for gallery. This is 714, this is the exact turquoise I use. Uh, you can see it here. Now they have cobalt turquoise, which looks fantastic. I can't wait for you to see the review for this one. This is such a beautiful thing. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna see this in more detail in Saturday's video, which is gonna be a review of these paints again. So yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> yeah, Josephine, sorry about that. Hey, Lollipop. Sorry, I'm late. Yeah, no worries. Welcome aboard. Hey, Paula. Good morning. Uh, great demo. Thank you. Have been watching on TV since the beginning, but unable to like or comment unless watching a laptop. Didn't want uh, you to miss out on like. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, sorry about that. And TV, it's a bit of a different story, right? I hate, I hate smart TVs. They're never smart. Uh, the Argnano, oh, I thought the cottage disappeared completely, but it was lack of light on camera. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't look good on camera. Uh, I can actually scan this for you and show you, like, really accurately, if you'd want me to. We can, when this is all said and done, I can do that. Would you like that? Let me know. Uh, barn being so blue looks like Lucas1862 cyan. Mm, that has dried uh, on my large porcelain palette. Oh, really? It's interesting. I never used Lucas, but I heard it's good. Uh, Allison, hello, sorry I missed a lot, thought was starting at uh, 2, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, this is the my usual time, just 9 a.m. Eastern time, but because they changed the daylight saving, maybe it's confusing if you're outside the U.S., not sure, um, looks great, good effect of sunshine, thank you, <laughs> Diana, I, I don't think you can, uh, can you block Beachy, I think, if you're not a moderator, I don't think you can, but I did at least, I put him, put him in timeout for 300 seconds, uh, I hope, I hope they don't come back. Uh, try soft <laughs> Uh Let's see. Uh, that's the kindest warning I've ever heard. Yeah, I always try to do that. Um, Raisa, first time here. I'm really enjoying it. Hi from Colombia. Thanks so much for being here. That's so cool. Uh, Rosewood, your bravery with those darks is super inspiring. Love to watch you paint. I learned so much. It really uh, makes the light areas pop. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Marjorie, uh, cows are naturally curious. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I know they love music too. Um, Let's see, let's move a bit. Thank you so much, Dwayne. Patricia, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Lollipop. White Reza, how do you know when you're good enough to teach? Um, I think you just try and teach and see how people react. Because I don't think there's ever like a moment, you know? Uh, I started teaching way before I, I would consider myself today good enough to teach. Uh, but if you're interested in teaching, if you have some interest in it, uh, I think that's in, that's a good indication that there may be something there. Because usually people who want to teach, there's something very real behind it. I always wanted to share and teach and show. Um, so yeah, it's worth thinking about if you, if you have that desire and to just try and teach whatever you know at, the, at this, that specific moment, you know? Um, uh, Patricia, some galleries are asking 50% commissions here now. Yeah, I get that. And again, it depends on how what what's the what's their list price. So 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing, right? Um, I would go for a 50% deal if I knew the gallery is going to sell at a specific price and above. Um, so it really depends. Uh, the gallery provides a lot. I'm I'm not for you know bad marketing tactics of galleries and and them um, using artists, but I definitely recognize that they bring some value. You know, like the audience. Uh, don't you use a hair dryer? Yeah, I do. But here there wasn't need to. We're talking, so it's good. I'm gonna use it maybe later on. Uh, Ruthie says hello from Toronto. Fun to watch. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Joyce, yes, please scan it and post. I will do. I will show it to you live, uh, the scanned version. You'll see how good the colors look. Uh, got Lucas drawing, drawing to send? Send it over. Uh, Amy, good morning, Liron. Do you ever play with heavy light on dark washes? Heavy light on dark washes? Don't see too many people doing it. So what do you mean by that, light on dark? If you're going to paint light on dark, you need to use opaque paint, right? So just let me know what you mean and I'll try to... Uh, let you know. Uh, when I'm confused about something, then somebody asks a question. Yeah, uh, that that's often the case because people have similar questions in mind. Robert Carp, wonderful, thank you, thank you so much. 
Dwayne, I'm an artist here uh, on YouTube and my watercolors look like acrylic or gouache. Yeah, that's gonna be due to flow. For me as an artist, I sell mostly portraits. Yeah, okay. So if you like that look, that's great. If you want to improve that, because some people have an issue with that look, it's just flow. Just get the paint to flow enough and it'll be good. So let me take a look, figure out if there's anything else I want to change, because I think I won't change a thing anymore. I think this one is done. And I think I'm going to call it done, which means I can scan it and share with you the final results, by the way. Um, because the, I'm not I'm not going to add opaque paint, I think. I'm not going to add here opaque paint. I don't see the need to. I just like the way it looks right now. And I don't feel like rendering the leaves individually at the moment. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think I would add anything else. Let me look at this. You know, people have a hard time knowing when to stop. I'm like, I just know that it's time to stop. Um, yeah, that's good. I'm... I don't think I want to change anything. It doesn't happen very often. Like, I could add a bit of a pattern of, of you know, grass. And let me show you how I would do it at least. So I'll just take, I think I'll use a bit of a cooler mix for this. And then just like I did the shadows I did earlier, you can kind of put in a few of these things indicating the texture. You kind of move, move them with your hand and you see it creates this nice little grassy texture. Maybe it's a shadow, maybe it's not, but just to give it some kind of a, of a texture, but honestly, this, this looks good. I, that's good. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it done. Let me dry this so that it flattens and I can scan it for you. Okay. And you see, this effect kind of ended up paying off. We did it in a decent timing, like this book, which thing and details. So let me let this dry for a few seconds, hair dryer, and I'll be back. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot to fix here. If you want to, you can, you know, close off these gaps and everything like this gap shouldn't be here. There isn't that light of a gap on the left, but I actually like the gracefulness of it being a bit more direct, I guess, and brave. So I'm going to leave it like that. You know how I am. Usually I will fix stuff, but I like that. And see, that could be a great study if I want to do a bigger, more uh, dedicated, more accurate version of this same scene. Uh, and put in more details and be a little more accurate and maybe even use masking fluid or stuff like that uh, but i enjoy these quicker ones much more sometimes so yeah uh, that's just me you know once in a while i'll get this bug that's like go paint something more detailed and realistic but for the most part i enjoy these far more so here it is let me uh, scan it now you see it a little closer to what it actually is uh, but i'm gonna try and scan it for you and by the way, here are those uh, examples I showed you earlier. See, right, pretty separate. Here a bit of flow, which actually looks good. Same here. Uh, so let's scan this for just a second. Um, even though I haven't signed it yet, I'm going to sign it after the stream. It doesn't matter. So let us scan this. Um, Let's edit the settings, 300, color, don't crop, done, scan. There we go. And let's see what you're saying in the meantime. Mm. And Dwayne, you say you sell portraits. Yeah, good, so you found your audience. If you sell even a little, even, even a trickle of sales means you found something that works, um, which is great. Which is great. Most artists don't sell anything, unfortunately. Um, 
Yeah, Calvin says, unless it's one of those top-notch galleries where billionaires hang out, 50% commissions would be too high. No, even, you don't need billionaires. All you need is millionaires, honestly. Uh, there we go. Okay, that's good. That looks good, I think. And we're going to put it in our folder. Tester. Scan. Hopefully it's not gonna make my OBS software crash because it's a, I think it's a bit of a big file. But thank you for your patience uh, as I'm cropping this one for you to see. One second. Let's try and I just want to make this the dimensions a little smaller so that it doesn't crash the stream. But in the meantime, uh, hello from Winnipeg. Uh, thank you for being here, Wes. John says, instead of letting my background dry, I found myself fussing over the cabin. Bed water color habits are hard uh, to break. Yeah, definitely. But it's fine if you're fussing a bit. You know, you saw I was fussing just a little bit, but I knew when to stop. Uh, that's a big part of it. Uh, just knowing when to stop, right? But even if you don't, if you go a little too overboard, it's not the end of the world, honestly. So let's see. Yeah, okay, that's good. That's a file size I can work with. So I'm gonna open it up, and maybe you'll be like, "Oh, that's it." But <laughs> maybe you'll 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 think to yourself, "It's not that good, but it's okay." Um, let's see here. Now I don't know why painting and talking becomes even more hard with time. I think because I'm trying to do more. There we go. So this is uh, the scanned result. So this is as accurate as it gets. This is how I see it. And let's see how it compares to what you're seeing here on camera. That's actually quite close. But you see, it's more green, right? That's what I told you. It's a little more green. You can tell the difference between the two. Um, and that green is actually really cool. So let me make this a little bit bigger here. And you can see. Um, let's move the palette. So my painting doesn't dip into the wells. Let's let's move everything here. Let's evacuate the area. Uh, so yeah, I wonder uh, what your thoughts are on this. Let me know as we uh, go over the last round of chats and then we'll uh, start moving towards wrapping it up. Of course, the colors are very different. Um, maybe I'll challenge myself to, to match the colors properly uh, finally at some point soon. Because uh, it's something I, I'm working on in private, but when it's game time, I usually don't get the colors uh, accurate. By the way, notice how I could go a little darker with the background, but I actually like it this way. I could darken more around the cabin. I uh, don't know how I would do it. Probably would pre-wet, uh, just to make sure that I don't create a mess. Because doing, you can do this, this wash I just did, the last one of the background, you can do that over this wash. I don't think it will turn out as well because now the paper is already absorbed quite a bit. You can do that as a first wash, definitely. You can do that over a very pale initial wash like we did here, but doing this like on this wash, it's gonna be above it. The the, abil the absorbability of the paper has been uh, greatly reduced, so it's not a good idea. So at this point, I'm kind of letting it go. Um, Amy says, yes, as in cadmium yellow hue directly on a thalo wash or glaze, very difficult. If the thalo blue is dry, <coughs> it's going to be also impossible. And you won't see, unless it's really opaque, I guess. Uh, I sometimes do that with my when, in the finishing stages. I definitely do that with my John Brilliant and, and my pale green sometimes too, Shinhan PWC. I sometimes like to do that. I enjoy that. Uh, not a lot, though. Uh, uh, White Reza, I've worked on black and white portraits for the last few days after seeing your video, enjoyed it so much. Oh yeah, great. Yeah, that's that, I think that's a very useful, underrated video. Uh, and Wayne, happy I could help in any way. Um, there is a video of mine that I posted two weeks ago about the, how to not overwork your watercolor. I don't know if any of you noticed, but it has about 80,000 views. Now it really exploded, so that was great. Uh, that made me very happy. Uh, by the way, look at how I messed up the blending here. I didn't. Bl I didn't. The angle wasn't good. I can actually fix that now. Let me show you. It's it's not well blended and it's really awkward looking. But if I just do this, 
And that, we're good. Just a bit of a... And you can glaze over it with more green if you feel like you want to darken it back, but it's not that important. Um, there we go. Um, you are good enough to... Marjorie says you are good enough to teach as soon as people start asking you to. Yeah, that's true. But sometimes people won't ask, so you have to just do it. Uh, Melodia, I love your work and the color palette is beautiful. Thank you so much. Let me get this closer to me so I can properly... Um, see what you're saying. Monica and a great painting. Love the lights uh, and dark. Thank you so much. Do this. There we go. Much more comfortable. Um, Kelvin, I just stop when the painting looks good to me. Yeah, same here. I have no problem really knowing when to stop. Uh, again, if anything, I have a hard time <laughs> you know, knowing what to add sometimes. John, I'm loving these color combinations. Thank you so much. Laura Merrifield, as far as teaching goes, I've been watching Liron for years and it's been fun watching him grow as an artist and teacher. I've learned so much. Yeah, and my old videos, I, I really improved since, so you know. Uh, don't be ashamed at what you already know and try and use that, I think. Um, I think it's great, as is. Thank you, Argnono. Uh, Melodia says, what paper and how many grams are you using? 300 grams? Um... 300 grams of, is it the 300, 140 LBS, I think? 300 grams. Uh, Arsh cold press. Uh, not rough, because rough paper is really hard to work with for me. Arsh rough. Uh, cold press. Laura Merrifield, he will always let you know if he is trying something new at my struggle. <laughs> Rossietta. <laughs> yeah, Rossietta is really new for me. Uh, not new, but I haven't used it in a while. Thanga says, I like the cards. I always thought that what comes last that what comes last comes first. Oh, like to start with the the end focal point, you mean? To start with the most important detail. Uh, Yvonne, what paper were you using? Yes, Arsh Cold Press, 300 grams. Uh, but I like Saunders Waterford better than Arsh, honestly. Dwayne says, I'm a popular artist on the rise here in Jamaica and am self-taught for the most part. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm gonna, let me search, YouTube search your channel. Maybe I can see some works. Let's see here. And thank you so much for being here as a fellow uh, artist. Oh, you're doing good. You have a thousand something subscribers. That's good. That means you're you're onto something, because so, uh, most people just don't grow at all. Um, so that's really cool. Oh, you have you have a, like a really detailed uh, how to paint bananas. That's cool. I subscribed, Dwayne. So keep keep doing those videos. Really nice. Really, really cool. Keep it up. Um, let's see here. Hello, Shiny says hi from New Zealand. Thank you for being here. John, thank you. I'm happy you like it. Watercolor is my passion. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, that's funny, Dwayne. It's like, yeah, sometimes what your passion is may not be the thing that makes even the most money. And that's something I'm trying to contend with. You know, even when I look at my own business, sometimes the aspects I enjoy most aren't the most profitable ones and the aspects I don't like as much bring in more money even in a, on a passive in a passive way right uh, in my case I'm actually happy a big part of my income is the book sales on Amazon and that's something I do and the books are there and I don't have to continue working at it so it's very much the closest thing you'll get to passive income um, but one of the things I enjoy most is painting just painting for myself in quiet and really putting in like the my all into a painting uh, and that's not the most profitable part of my business the selling of the painting right the most profitable part is teaching so it's interesting how i think over the long run what you want to do is figure out how you can make more from the thing you enjoy doing more right that's the real uh i guess art form of building a career around art that's the meta art uh, George says, I think it, uh, I think it's very beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thanga. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, Amy. Um, hello, Shiny says, I love the reds and blues. Yeah, I really like them too. It's a nice combination. These are two colors that would m neutralize each other normally. So they look good, just separate. Uh, White Reza, uh, you have definitely a very interesting style. Very nice. Uh, I don't know if it's for me or for 
uh, Dwayne, who talked about his channel, but yeah, thank you, <laughs> if it's for me. Laura, wonderful, everyone love it. Thank you, thank you, April, thank you so much. Thank you, Calvin. Um, bold background surprised me, but ended up beautiful and very Leron-esque. Yeah, definitely, Marjorie. Um, it's really my kind of thing. I, I definitely have a lot of work to, to do to improve, you know? Um, because right now, a lot of the effect created is random. I would like to have more control over it and be more deliberate with it, for sure. Uh, Patricia, my background is not as dark. Would glazing over it with darker color make a mess? You're answering my question as I type. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny, I just mentioned that. Yeah, so if you just want to put a flat wash on top of it, you can definitely do that. Just make sure not to scrub. Just go use an angle, have the paper at an angle, and just put the wash over it to darken it. Now, if you want to start doing wet and wet and splashing into it and stuff like that, That'll be very hard. I would recommend pre-wetting, but just very loosely. So when I say loosely, I mean, you just take, you know, a bit of water in your brush. And when you pre-wet, you just do this and that's it. You don't start, you know, scrubbing because then you reawaken it. See, if I start playing around with it, I'm going to reawaken that. We don't want that. We just want a clear wash above it, whether it's a wash to darken or just water to pre-wet and allow you to uh, do some wet and wet even if you're doing it on top of a wash. The only problem you're gonna run into is if you're using a cheaper, simpler paper, even pre-wetting may end up slowly eating into the dried paint and reawakening it, and then you'll get a big mess and you'll end up lifting what's there, and that's a big problem that I also get when I work on cheaper paper. So it has nothing to do with skill. So you wanna watch out for that. I think if you just want to purely darken, the best solution is to do a quick wash of a light to mid value paint. If you have to do another one, do another one, but just one go, don't fuss around with it too much. Uh, but yeah, Nancy looks good, cool. I like to paint cows, awesome, yeah. Thank you for being here. Uh, Allison, that's better, much greater definition, colors and exposure much better, yeah, for sure. Uh, hello, Shiny, I wouldn't make the background more dark, I think it would take away from the depth, I agree. I completely agree with you. That's the risk of doing it. Um, it's better to sometimes just leave it like that. Um, it will maybe bring too much attention to it, take away from the cows, who knows, you know? Uh, John says, pushing the cabin into the background with wet and wet to make the cows the focus was a really smart choice. Yeah, and it's one of those things in the past I would just paint the cabin as it is and it would never end up looking as good. And you have to understand, like right now we have the reference photos right here above the scan, right? Can you see both of them here? They look good even though the cabin is very obvious because it's real life. It's very hard to compete with real life, so I just changed it. Because the the rooftop of that cabin is lighter and the grass is brighter than my grass, right? The grass is greener. Uh, all Everything is more nuanced in, the re in real life. So real life can afford to bring a darker background, a lighter cabin, uh, more saturated stuff, every individual leaf shows, because it's real life, you can't compete with that. So some modifications are uh, due. I can't possibly paint each and every group of leaves in the trees behind. So I just did this wet and wet effect, right? Um, it's very hard to do it other, uh, sorry, I think the audio popped. It's very hard to do it any other way. It is possible, everything is possible. Don't let me stop you from painting hyper-realistic, but just saying, that's my uh, taste. Um, let's see, where were we? Um, Wolf Gang Soul, yes, it worked. I want, uh, I wonder, it is beautiful. Uh, thank you so much, Pat. Hey, hey, Pat, how are you? Sorry, should, uh, showed up late. Looks awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Megan, I feel like I just want to practice painting a tree like this. No matter how hard I try, I feel like everything I do is flat or overworked because I can't stop fussing. Yeah, just three layers, so to speak. Put in that light wash I put, and put in that red, then put in the blue and stop, you know? And a good kind of way of practicing this would be to force yourself to look at what happens on paper and stop for like 10 seconds. Put a wash and look at it. Don't do anything. Don't feel the pressure to immediately touch it. Wait, take your time. Use enough water. And that's something I showed a student recently. You just, if you put enough water, you have time to think and to not just go based off of instinct. And instinct is great, and I use instinct all the time, but you need to build experience to back up that instinct, right? 
I hope that helps, Megan. That's something that a lot of people have a hard time with. Uh, Dwayne says, have you ever seen Kellogg Loops uh, water codes? Yeah, definitely. Um, I enjoy them from time to time. Uh, Rue, what's the pen you use when fixing the grass? Oh, it's just a brush. It's um, it's this one. I think you talk about that, right? It's the uh, Skoda number 10 Versatile. Versatile, you can see it here probably better. Uh, there we go. I don't think I use the pen. I use this one, right? Um, hopefully I'm not confused. Or maybe you talk about this one, the blending brush. That's a um, Royal and Langnickel Zen Series number six. That's a really neat one for it. It has a very short hair, so that it's easy to scrub and lift using it. Um, thank you, Valadia. Uh, Ruthie, have you ever used a watercolor gorilla board? Um, no, I don't think I know what that is. I do. Let me search. I don't know what that is, actually. Gorilla board? I know there's this company called Gorilla Painter. Maybe you talk about that. I have no idea, honestly. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, the Arnado, I love. Uh, uh, I love raw sienna, especially since it resists forming green when in contact with blues. Yeah, it's very much uh, neutral with it. Uh, thank you, Dwayne, for the hearts. Patricia, you are so supportive for your uh, viewers. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Going through my picks now. You're an inspiration. I'm going to... That's SG says that. I'm going to challenge myself artistically by painting animals. Yeah, animals are fun. And if you can, just paint one cow. Don't go for a scene like me. One cow is hard enough. Just for starters. Uh, Dwayne says, I was thinking about doing a coloring book. Yeah, that was a huge niche a while ago. Uh, I make and sell greeting cards here in store. Oh, cool. Do you do, like, consignments? How does that work? Uh, do you... Um, sell it to the store and then they sell it or like I always am curious about these things because it's something I didn't even dip my feet into uh, but was fat uh, even the top pros like Andy Evenson can make a living just selling art teaching workshops is much more profitable even top pros can't um, I actually think Andy Evenson um, is able to make a living I think you know I don't I don't I can't get into finances of people but I think the top pros can um, people who have a name and are present in many galleries, I think they should be able to. But of course, teaching is like a huge power up, right? It can maybe even double what you make from selling paintings or quadruple, depending on how many paintings you sell, of course. Uh, but yeah. Thanga, can we try the same picture that you have painted this evening? Is it? There? Yeah, I put a link in the description box. So you should be able to find it. Uh, Kelvin, use squirrel hair mop brush with soft hair. You can can accidentally lift. Oh yeah, that's a good idea to use a softer hair kind of squirrel so that it doesn't scrub that bad. Yeah, that's a great tip actually. Uh, Ruthie, what program or format did you use, Liron, to write your book on Amazon? Beautiful job on the painting. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've been using a bunch of tools. I don't even remember because I haven't published a book in a while. But I used, I think, Caliber is called. Basically, you write the thing and then you convert it into an HTML and then an EPUB format. Um, you can do the same with Adobe Illustrator um, if you want more of a picture book kind of thing going and then turn it into an EPUB um, and then Amazon knows how to deal with that. EPUB is the main format. Um, there is a software called Caliber. It's, um, or maybe I'm not using Caliber anymore. I don't even remember. Caliber, yeah, Caliber is good. And then Sigil. Sigil, I use it to turn um, um, doc files or Word files into EPUB. It's been a while since I did this process, and honestly, I think I'll outsource this, it the next time. And there will be a next time. I am considering a new book. So uh, that's the first time I mentioned it, uh, actually. So if you've been here this long, if you're one of the 70... Uh, Two or 62 viewers, you know it now. Um, surprise. <laughs> but it's going to take a long time just thinking about it now. Um, hello, Shine. And by the way, feel free, Ruthie, to email me and I'll try and give you more detailed answer because it's a bit of a tricky... I need to go back and check what I what I used. Uh, hello, Shiny. It looks very good painting as a photo. It's got too much going on. Yeah, you need to change things. Uh, thank you so much. Satu, hi. Greetings from Finland. Uh, need to try this. Yeah, definitely. Give it a try. Uh, let me know how it goes. Patricia, Gorilla. Yeah, Gorilla, I know. Maybe it's for plain air watercolor. Yeah. Gorilla, I know. I actually have a product of theirs. Mm, I had a hard time using it. Not their fault, but it just wasn't specifically made for my use. 
white dress it always depends uh what you need to live yeah definitely fewer expenses uh andy himself says he can't make enough just selling um you know again not to get into the finances but um he had a post recently showing a bunch of paintings he sold in the last six months to a year and i looked at the prices he's selling at and i did the, the math because i was curious to see because i'm you know trying to sell more paintings right now and it seems to me if you don't have huge expenses probably he could for that time frame he probably could make a living off of just saying the paintings but he did comment that he forgot that he's also just an artist he starts to feel more like a teacher because teaching is a big part so maybe before that there was a dry spell you know i don't know but yeah it's it's tricky it's tricky you need to sell a lot or very premium prices or do a lot of business development and collaboration with businesses who pay more for your paintings. I definitely agree. Um, Dwayne, the store pays full price and they add a markup. Oh, good, good, good. I offer free replacement for all damaged cars and for seasonal cars. That's a really, that's a great idea. That's So that's business mindset, way to go. Uh, Ruthie says, thanks for all the info on the book. Gorilla uh, Paint watercolor board is right. It secures your paper down so it doesn't buckle. Oh, I don't. I, I have no idea. I've never seen it. Maybe I'll check it out. Um, Marjorie, my friend, and one of my teachers, uh, Ernestine Bucking, made a very good living from almost totally selling. But then again, was in galleries and did shows. A lot of physical work. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when I sold in the local art fair, I made a lot from selling the paintings, but it was was hard work. Ernest Bucking, oh, that's nice. Uh, Ernestine, sorry, Ernestine is a painter. Yeah, that's a really nice work. That definitely has an audience. Really cool. Okay, good. So we can start moving towards wrapping it up. Uh, I want to thank you so, so much for everyone who's been here. If you can, now it's plug time. So if you can leave a like again, if you haven't, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you're watching this after the live stream ended, of course. Um, what else did I want to say? If you want to learn how to paint, enjoy the painting process. Paint freely with watercolor. Be sure to check out that frustration-free watercolor course. Link should be in the description box. Uh, hopefully it is. Let me check. Because now I don't remember what I put there. Yeah, okay. It's the first link. Um, so yeah, check that out for sure. That would be, mean a lot to me. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of the core audience has already purchased it. But uh, I still, 100 and something thousand subscribers, 120 something subscribers. A lot of people haven't yet. Uh, so be sure to check that out. If you want to get a painting of mine, uh, you can just head over to my gallery, lirongallery.com. That's just L-I-R-O-N. The word, or the word gallery dot com, uh, the word gallery. I think the audio clipped again, uh, and you can check that out as well if you want to get a painting. Uh, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, we can wrap it up. I want to. I will just want to thank you for being here. I really, really appreciate it. You allow me to do the thing I enjoy most and make a living from it. So that means a lot to me. Uh, if you do want more personal one-on-one -on -one critiques i do have the new patreon tier you want to check that out um it's 30 minutes a month show me as many paintings as you want at that time and we'll do specific feedback on what you can do to improve your paintings uh, but in any case with that we'll wrap it up thank you so so much and i will see you in saturday's video and of course next week we're gonna have live stream same hour uh, i believe and yeah this is it we'll talk to you again soon thank you so so much for watching really appreciate it